Here are five things that you must know, understand and do in order to successfully start up a YouTube channel in 2024, whether it's for YouTube shorts, yeah. actual long form videos. And I need you guys to know that this conversation as a whole was brought to you by the Think Media Podcast, founded by the Sean Carnell and his team. And so here is a big shout out to you, Sean Carnell. Thank you for the work that you do. I love you. I love your teams. I watch your videos. And oh my God, they are so inspiring. Let the conversations begin. And then the first one is courage. You have to start messy. And I think about this, you know, I have some tactics as we get into it, but now that I've had the chance to coach so many different people that have started YouTube channels and grow their YouTube channels, I've realized that really the first thing that holds us back is our self and our fears and our mindsets. We feel like we're not ready. We feel like, man, is anybody gonna care? We feel like, am I gonna be judged? Is there gonna be negative comments? And these are all legitimate mindsets, but you're not gonna get results if you don't start. You're never gonna know if you don't start. Everything that you want in life is outside of your comfort zone. So I do want to lay a foundation that um, you got to start before you're ready. You got to start messy. You probably have a million questions. Even if you've already been subscribed to or the Think Media podcast or other channel for a while, you still probably are like, but what about this? But what about that? You have to just start. And my second tip is clarity, and we can hit that one in a second, but the reason that I say start messy is there's really two kinds of people. Maybe you're already a, a professional, a business owner, so you're already know you're in real estate, you already are in carpentry, and you, so you know like you're gonna start a DIY channel helping people fix stuff around the home. You know that you're gonna start a real estate channel to get leads, clients, and sales in your local community. You know you're a musician that uses Ableton, so you wanna start doing music tutorials. Like, you already have clarity. So if you have that, we can dial that in when we get there in a second, but there's this whole other category where you know, someone's listening to this, they know they want to start, but they're unsure. They get, they have a million questions about what niche, what topic, what about this, what about that? And I would encourage you to just start posting videos. Just try something. Don't overthink it because we do learn by doing. And I know for me, because I didn't have fierce clarity when I started, I just started posting random videos on my Sean Cannell channel. There's a million lessons of mistakes I made, but the benefit of that was I started to learn how to film. I was learned how to edit. I experimented with this topic, that topic. And even though the brand ended up being kind of not great and the niche wasn't really clear and I was all over the place and that wasn't my successful YouTube channel. I haven't even uploaded there in years. It was a personal development experience, a skill development experience. And I like to say I have four YouTube channels that helped me eventually start a successful one. So absolutely in 2024, Start as soon as possible. Don't put it off. Don't just watch YouTube videos. Don't just consume information. We learn by doing. Take action. Press record. You got. It takes courage. You got to get uncomfortable. So just start. Point so number is two is clarity. And here's what I mean. If you've started and if you have maybe a few things that are under your belt, like you're comfortable, you figured out your camera, it may just be your smartphone. You've maybe figured out that you're gonna just edit videos simply on your phone or use CapCut. I love that as a mobile video editor, something like that. You maybe have shot a few videos, so you've overcome some hurdles and camera confidence, et cetera. You know, the title of this talk is like, if I was starting from scratch, what would I do? So I thought what we could do is we could look and process a channel that I've always dreamed of starting, but as a dad with a three-year-old, one-year-old, this video podcast, our other channel running the company, it's just a dream and it's on the side and I got enough going on with the niche I'm in. But I think about, you want to get clear on what is the best channel for you related to your passions? What is the best channel for you related to things that'll keep you curious? Ask yourself, will I still be interested and fascinate, fascinated by this and willing to research this and loving to study this and read about it? Like you don't have to be an expert, but if you're curious and you love it and you're interested in it, I think that's the superpower. And um, so I implore you guys to please take a brief of your time to subscribe to Think Media Podcast. They are the provider of this video right here and it makes perfect sense. And also to subscribe to Overworks, turn on the bell notifications and give this video a like so that the next time we bring out quality informations like this, YouTube is going to send you a notification so that you will be aware. Um, so I'm passionate about it. I'm I'm curious. I would uh, I geek out on it. It's a personal thing that I like to research and study and would love to share about. And 
it's also a way to make money. Now, that's just making the assumption that uh, that would be the desire. How do I start a successful YouTube channel in 2024 and a profitable YouTube channel? So the case study for me would be, I would start a channel on biohacking in the health niche, focusing on maybe nootropics, which are like these brain vitamins. There's different, sometimes it might be in liquid form, pill form. Um, but if we're talking about how do I start a successful YouTube channel from scratch, one of the most underrated things is getting your niche right, getting a to your topic right. And don't let that be confused with starting messy. And don't let that be confused. Nobody wants to hear this, but you, let's say you started a YouTube channel wrong. I think that's still okay. It never really worked. You did 50 to 100 videos. One of the most painful things could be pivoting your niche or starting a second channel, but people make the mistake that a lot of times that's what it takes to find success. There's a stat that says the average successful entrepreneur that like gets through the, the dip of hard work and getting cash flow and getting startup happening and actually makes it to some level of success and sustainability has started 2.6 businesses. So what does that mean? They have one successful business and out of one to two that failed. So one, like on average, so any successful entrepreneur business owner that now has a successful business on average had at least one fail or two fail before they found the one that worked. I think that could be similar to YouTube as well. And it may not be that you actually have to have a different channel, but I think that should give you permission to like what if my first videos suck? They will. Your first videos will be your worst videos. You know, you'd be terrible. But Oh, the, you know, your way to get to success, I heard one person put it this way, the recipe to get to success is suck, 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 cess. Your first three or 30 videos might suck, they might not be very good, but that's what leads to success. So start before you're ready, then dial in that clarity. And so that would be the niche that I choose. I, I would pick that niche and I'll explain why in a little bit, but that would be tip number two. Get clear on your niche, get clear on who your channel's for, what problem does it solve, and get clear that, again, if you want this to be financially viable, come up with a money plan. Come up with kind of a business plan for your ch channel ahead of time to like start with the end of mind. Look down the road. What is it you want to build? And start a channel intelligently and strategically by thinking through some of those things. Point number three is create a schedule. You know, what gets scheduled gets done. It's in a way also like create a system for how you're gonna be producing content. We don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. What's a system? Well, I am researching on this day, I'm recording on this day. Um, it may be even things you put into your life. My aunt's gonna watch the kids Saturday morning so that I can film. Um, I'm gonna edit here. And then it eventually, and there's a lot of things more than we'll cover here, but you know, then I take the SD card out, it goes to my computer. The system is I use this editing software and then I put it in there and I export the file and I upload it. Um, and ultimately, you know, one of the most powerful things we've created is not just a seven step system for YouTube success at Think Media, but all but a, like probably a hundred micro systems. Everything in life, I think for a life well lived that's effective and productive is gonna be empowered by systems. And so having a schedule is one of those. If you're gonna start a channel, it's not enough to just start it. Cause technically to start a channel, right? You just gotta set it up. But what, what we mean is like, can we start a channel that has some level of consistency on it? And I would recommend um, you know, there's so many different answers to this question, but it's like, how many videos should I upload a week? I would recommend one video a week. And I would want to define that one thoughtful, strategic, quality, researched, crafted video per week. I don't mean it has to be edited or anything. Again, you may be able to just hit record, talk for seven minutes, turn the camera off and upload it. But for that seven minutes to be as powerful as possible, having a little practice, having a little planning, um, having some notes in front of you, thinking about what the title is ahead of time, thinking through it. Prior planning prevents poor performance. And one of the biggest opportunities if you wanna succeed on YouTube is consolidating time and saving people time. Here's what I mean. There's a really successful personal finance YouTuber named Graham Stephan. And one of the things he's known for is he puts out great research videos that are concise, clear, and they really take complex information and they make it simple. Well, what does he do? He's known for researching 20, 30, 40 hours for one video. Now, I'm not saying you have to take that much time to be successful, but think about what happens. If he, if he researches and plans for 20 hours, 
and the final product of his video is 10 minutes, it's one of the reasons why the video is so successful because we're all so busy in our lives. You're doing the heavy lifting, again, even if you don't edit, if you take an hour or two hours or three hours to prepare, and then all of that time preparing, you've consolidated it down into a three to five minute or a 13 minute video, you're doing a service to people. That's why people feel the value of it. The, the flip side is true. If you just wing it, it kind of reminds me of my first video. I was like, listen, this is my first video. Um, I'm not gonna be energetic or entertaining. I don't even have a plan. And that video didn't go viral, like, because there was no plan, there was no energy. I didn't really go into it intentionally. So one long form upload per week to clarify. I think that there's, it gets interesting with YouTube shorts. Those are much easier to create. It's fine to start with YouTube shorts. Those are gonna be vertical videos, 60 seconds or less. That maybe switches it up. So if you can do a long form video and a couple shorts, totally fine. If you have bandwidth for more, great. But I think people are underestimating committing to uploading just one quality video. And I've, I've this is what I mean by quality too. I mean content value, not production value. Back to not editing. Content value would be you put your phone on some shoe boxes in front of a window. The There's carpet on the floor and you're, it's a smaller room, so just the on-camera phone microphone is good enough. Like, so you have no accessories, no gear, great. And But people can hear you, they can see you, you got some daylight. The production value is not that impressive, it's not a fancy camera, but the content value is the title you thought about, the topic you know the audience cares about because of research, and then the, the investment you've put in into the information that you're sharing. And so um, think about that content, like, high quality content. And I've heard it said that the definition of excellence is doing the best you have with what you have right now. Hey creator, I'm sure by now there are lots of valuable information that you have taken away from this video. And the good news is you can actually start implementing these information even today. And so I implore you guys to please take a brief of your time to subscribe to Think Media Podcast. They are the provider of this video right here and it makes perfect sense. And also to subscribe to Overworks, turn on the bell notifications and give this video a like so that the next time we bring out quality informations like this, YouTube is going to send you a notification so that you will be aware. And also do want to let me know in the comment section what has been your biggest blocker starting up a YouTube channel. Okay, so point number four then is topics. I think that in 2024, one of the biggest mistakes that people are making is they're not knowing what matters most on YouTube. So let me actually go in descending order of the things that and how important they are. People wonder how important are YouTube tags? Not very important. Let's put that in number five. Okay, how important is your YouTube description? Kind of important. You can reinforce some words and data that might communicate to YouTube what the video is about. Also, there's some practical things there that could serve the viewer, maybe some links you could put in the description that could lead to monetization. So description is probably in the fourth place. What's most important with the videos? Okay, in second and third place, I think it's a tie. People say, what's most important? Is it the thumbnail? Is it the title? I would say thumbnail is actually probably second place because it's more important than title. You want a good, th uh, a good thumbnail, but you, you literally can't have one without the other, like they work together. So I'd go third place, most important would be title. Second place, most important would be thumbnail. And when I'm thinking about that, we'll get to number one in a second, but when I'm thinking about uh, title and thumbnail, um, that helps you with just, again, so much clarity around crafting a title before you press record. That's gonna lead to clicks and views and success there. So people say, okay, if I, how do I write good titles? That's something to master. How do I make good thumbnails that get people to click? That's something to master. But there's something more important than all of that. And that's usually the only thing that gets brought up in, in conversation. Okay, so what's in first place? If tags is fifth, description is fourth, title is third, thumbnail is second, what's in first place? Topic. Topic is in first place. And here's why. Because the creator who understands the viewer best wins. And if you wrote the best title possible, these days there's AI tools, and so you're like, help me write a great title about X, you know? You write a great title. If you design the most amazing thumbnail 
uh, as possible. Like you hired a graphic designer, you paid him $500 for the thumbnail. You hired a writer who's a famous novelist. You paid him $500 for the title. Okay, you know, well, if it's about a topic that is not what's top of mind for people, a topic that people aren't super interested in, a topic that isn't actually like a pain point or a high desire, here's what I like to do. I like to actually score topics on a scale from one to 10. How interested are people in this topic? Is it a one? They're not that interested. Like it's information they may want to know, but they're not that interested. Is it a 10? It's the problem they're working. It's their most, their highest ambition. It's one of their biggest problems. It's troubling them. It's causing conflict in their relationships. It's one of their desires. And if you think about the topic being a 10, even if, this is what's wild, even if the title is not great, the thumbnail is okay. Again, tags almost have no weight anymore, but there's some practicalities to them, description. Like topic is just such a, such a big deal. And if you talk about the right topic at the right time, look at anybody that covers trending news or something that is timely in the moment, the thumbnail might be terrible. Like all they did was get a few things in the title right uh, to at least you just know what it's about, but the fact that you wanted that information right now, that story right now. So I think it's about topics. And let me apply some of the topics I would do to my biohacking channel. So on my biohacking channel, um, I would do product reviews. Again, uh, I love these. We call it RSP, review-specific products, because there are products that help you. I am personally a, a shopper. I've purchased red light therapy uh, panels. I love them. I would review them, talk about my experience. But there's also a reason I would do this, because it would add value. It, it, notice we got our clarity right. And I picked a topic that is related, a channel topic that is related to products. Like if you're going to biohack, you can do a lot of, you could get into the sun, you could go into a cold river to cold plunge. You could do a lot of things that are natural, but there's also a lot of things, which those are great videos too, but there's also a lot of things that are purchasable products that don't, that don't just serve the viewer, but are also monetizable from the start. So I, could, so I could review specific products, tap into like affiliate marketing. I would do interviews. So again, I'm not actually really that big of an expert. I'm just the curious student that almost would act like a reporter to curate the experts. I love the interview model because it allows me to just learn more, ask questions that I have. And here's what I'm saying. You don't need to be a product review channel. You don't need to be an interview channel. We actually teach 16 different kind of topics, video categories that are very powerful for getting views. Interviews is one of them. Review specific products is one of them. But I'd be picking topics. And what I love about, again, interviews is probably not at the start. I wouldn't be able to get somebody like Dave Asprey, who's big in the biohacking space, or I wouldn't be able to, not at the start, but you could start like interviewing different, different people. I, I use what's called a PEMF mat, pulse electric magnetic field. Um, there's all these things about recovery, how, what it can do for your body, all these benefits. And I discovered a guy named Dr. Pollock, who's kind of like the leading expert. He wrote a book. He also has an e-commerce store. He also has an affiliate program. Before any of that, I went with personal need. I wanted to feel better. There were some chronic health things. Um, it's a very niche product, a niche category, but I don't have this channel, but I have a feeling someone like Dr. Pollock, he has like 5,000 subs on his YouTube channel. I think he'd agree to an interview with me. And, and I could jump on using a tool like StreamYard or something like that and interview somebody who could go deeper. There's, there's endless opportunities in the biohacking world to do that. So I'm now creating leverage. That's one form of content. I could go to the products that are already in my house because I'm living this. And that's why if you pick the right channel topic, you should already have the stuff because that's who you are. That's what you already are into. That's what you love. And now you're able to cash in on your passion. You're able to monetize your passion. And uh, I would answer specific questions um, related to um, biohacking, maybe, you know, how do you get better sleep or is melatonin good for you or bad for you? And, and I may, I would actually would need to probably do a lot of interviews to get some of that information. But then I also um, would teach specific skills, maybe things I've learned how to do. Here's how you uh, here's the routine that I have. I might do morning routine videos. So we, we, that's that topic is a topic for another time. Um, but I think picking the right topics is going to be so key to getting views, picking the right channel topic and picking the right video topics. And the last thing I'll say on this one is there's really kind of two big categories of content. There's search-based content and there's suggested content. Let me try to define search-based content What's powerful here is Biomax red light therapy 900X or whatever model 
panels reviewed. So what I love about this is the reason I love product review videos and, and is because products are influencers. People are listening to this, right? Sean, I'm at zero. I'm starting from scratch. How do I get discovered? And yeah, and people don't know you and people are not searching for you and they're not looking for you. And why would they? Because they don't know you yet and you fear you're in ob obscurity. So what you want to be asking if you're starting a channel from scratch is how can I tap into influence that's greater than my own? Most people think I wish somebody famous would shout me out. I wish I could get a famous interview. Well, of course, that's one thing that would be helpful. And that's what, another reason why interviews are, are a great form of content. But people don't realize that products are influencers. One of the ways I grew my brand was I talked about particular camera models. You didn't know Sean Cannell yet. You knew you were looking for a reviewer comparison of the Canon 60D. You found that video. You saw that that was my experience, video, you know, teaching how to use cameras, the best lenses. And then some level of connection happened there. And the influential thing was a search-based topic, was something that somebody was looking for. So I actually, starting a channel from scratch and even for established creators that want to continue to grow, I would not ignore search-based content. In a suggested world, and I'll explain what that is briefly, but search-based content is actually kind of a forgotten art, and it's probably one of the biggest opportunities for people in 2024. But then the other option is suggested. So if the title of a search-based video is, you know, tutorial or review um, of a Biomax red light therapy light, a suggested title might be like, this weird gadget supercharges your brain. And it's a curious, like that's not search-based because you didn't wake up and be like, oh, is there a weird gadget that supercharges my brain? But we all see YouTube videos like that. That's your biggest shot for going, getting you know more kind of viral content. You're going for mystery, curiosity, the thumbnails, like what is the gadget? They maybe see it, you're, you're, you're doing that kind of thing. And, and what I've seen is there's extremes. People usually pick one or the other when the superpower is to potentially do both. The other superpower is realizing that videos titled properly can kind of also tap, tap into to both topics. And then finally, if I'm starting a channel from scratch, extreme focus. That's my number five, extreme focus. And I learned this the hard way. So this kind of makes me think about my journey on YouTube. I, the first channel I started was in 2007 for my church. That was pretty focused because that was the only channel I was doing. And it was a clear reason that, by the way, back to clarity, it actually was clear what we were trying to do with it. Like give people a way to watch the sermons, upload, you know, different videos we had. It was so early YouTube too. We weren't really doing much strategic, but it was kind of like a resource, a way to send the videos out, email videos, really early days. But then as I started to get into starting my own channels, I started my personal channel. I started a Clear Vision Media channel for my business, which is like a portfolio of my video production business. Then I started a channel called Think International with my friend Jeff Morris, which was like a faith-based channel interviewing pastors and leaders and authors uh, kind of in the Christian world. And out of Think International, I started getting questions about cameras and what gear we were using to produce those videos. My background had been by that time in video for about seven years, video production. So that led to the start of Think Media. Um, you know, fast forward a few years later, and I started a, a side project with my friend Video Inf uh, with my friend Benji called Video Influencers. But here's what we just like listed out. I would say that maybe around 2015. Um, I was trying to actually simultaneously run all four of those channels. I was still collaborating with Jeff every so often. We'd go to like a Christian conference and interview a few people. I still did some video production jobs, so I'd upload those in my portfolio. I wanted to vlog when I could and vlog a trip that I was on, so I uploaded that on like my Sean Cannell channel. I wanted to be consistent on Think Media. And then eventually, uh, because I don't, up to that point, had so much YouTube experience, we started Video Influencers to kind of collect our learnings um, and ramp up to a book we eventually wanted to write. So here's what I'm saying. I was doing way too much. And that was not the only thing I was doing. My life is just as complex as anybody else's. I mean, I know people listen to this. It's like, you got stuff to do. You might've got kids, you got school, you got work, you're busy. And when I think about extreme focus, I think that the problem is if you try and chase four rabbits, you'll end up catching none of them. Or you'll just be so tired and fatigued and you'll delay your eventual success because you've diluted your energy in four directions when you could have compounded it in one. 
So I think there's a couple mistakes that people make when starting a YouTube channel. They maybe get an idea, they have a topic, but if you're listening to this, you're probably like me. You're creative, you have new ideas every day, you might have new ideas for YouTube channels every day new businesses, new opportunities you see. You might be like, oh, I should talk about AI. Oh, I actually, I want to start a bone broth company. What? I want to, you know, start doing a book, a book club. I want to write a book. I want to write an ebook. And that's as I spin off. And that's not just YouTube. Because if you're listening to this too, you're like, maybe I want to create an online course. When am I starting my merch line? How do I start my Patreon? How do I? Slow down. Take a breath. Extreme focus. Coming from the person who ch just tried to do it all, it led to more fatigue and I'm so grateful that all those learnings and pain points ultimately got me to where I am today, and I'm very grateful to be here. But one of our company missions is to shorten people's learning curve. We just want to help you avoid the pain and the heartache and the fatigue. And, and for some, um, chasing too many rabbits might lead to so much exhaustion, so much discouragement, so much burnout that would have been avoidable if you guarded your focus. So I've heard focus stands for this, follow one course until successful, focus. Follow one course until successful. What's the one channel you're focusing on? What's the one brand you're building? What's the one business you're building? And I'm actually pretty stunned, and I know that maybe at least half people listening to this though, they're, they front, they're, they wanna start from scratch, but they wanna start three channels because they're like, man, I got so many passions. But now that I've thought about how like the channel should have a clear who and a clear what, well, the answer must be then to just divide the things I wanna talk about on three channels. And I would challenge you that that would be an answer for organization, but that's not the best solution for your sanity, your success, and your momentum. If you had to pick one, pick one. It's hard enough to make one business successful, why are you trying to make two businesses successful? It's hard enough to make one marriage successful. I guess if you're into polygamy, it's why are you trying to make three marriages successful? I don't know what people got going on or three. It's hard enough to make one wife happy. Why are you trying to make, that's so my wife, Sonia, actually always, uh, she's kind of into the polygamy shows, you know, sister wives and stuff like that. And she always, she's always, she's like, I just can't even imagine the dynamics, but all these different things. It's like, yo, you should pick one, you know, uh, focus, you know. Uh, I actually heard Dr. Phil put it this way, and I mean, I'm just quoting him here, but this is the way he said He said it. He said, God gave you one ass, so pick a horse and ride it. You can't ride two horses. Like, you get, and so God gave you one butt, one weird rear end, pick your horse. And let's just go a little bit deeper on this. I think the other thing though, if I'm starting a YouTube channel from scratch, I'm also wanna be hyper aware that I, I wanna say this, 2024, public enemy number one is distraction. And in 2024, we got more noise coming at us than ever before. There's more side quests on Instagram and distractions and more ads coming at you that you could be hit by and more business opportunities. Because even as you're starting a YouTube channel, again, you're like, oh, what? There's like new tools to make my merch? Which, yes, like eventually you could make merch and you could get your t-shirt going. And, and you're on day one and you're like, should I use Patreon or should I use YouTube channel memberships? On day one, neither. You should start get one video up a week, make sure your topics are good, get clear and like be consistent because you don't even have enough momentum yet to be like worrying about the full business development. I'm not saying put that in your business plan. It's great to have clarity of at least the general direction of the best ways to monetize your particular niche, but people get so distracted by so many different things and it delays success. At best, it delays success. At worst, it just wears you down too much. You can't think clearly. You got noise coming out. You're also, you're maybe watching too much content on YouTube. You're watching too many experts. You're reading too many books. You're buying too many books. These are like all things that, I, that I've done myself. You're, you're going too many directions at once. Let's make 2024 entirely different. You wanna start a successful YouTube channel? I would challenge you to, to narrow the scope of even who you're learning from. Many people have many different paths of how to get to a particular objective, but like pick one. Like pick, pick an expert, pick a system and work that system. There's a famous military quote that says a good plan violently executed this week is better than the perfect plan executed next week. Watch There's this video to understand why YouTube is deleting videos off the platform and how you can actually avoid this problem from happening to you. And I'll, I'll see you in the next one.